I would like to make my own energy. I'd like to just do it because it'd be fun. Check out my office. I did manage to clean my office enough to actually do something in it. And there's the first line of solar cells that I've made. Um, so there you go. That's uh, that's the size of the panel. It's about four foot by four foot. And these are rated at half a volt each. So that's what. There's my soldering iron. Um, it's a hacko. A lot. These are diodes. See those. Other things I got. Um, digital multimeter. There you go. Make sure it can do amps. Like I said, I've never done a whole lot of do-it-yourself building stuff, so this is all pretty new to me. So all I've done is made what will be a frame out of... This is just cedar. Okay. And then uh, I cut some grooves in it just with my table saw. That's all I did. The top groove will be for the glass. And all you need to do is to be able to connect the back, those three dots, those are the negative, or sorry, the positive side of the cell. You need to connect those with the tabbing wire. Like so, they need to go all the way, connect all three with a little bit of a tail at the end. About 79 millimeters. There we go. That's 21 tabs. Beware of cats who like to get at the wire. <laughs> Solder. Iron. Cell, cell dots. Best one so far. Okay, it's time to test this guy. It's time to test. Well, they're all done. So one of my last steps here is to solder together the panels, or sorry, the strings of cells. Um, so you can see I've started. There's tabbing wire that goes between. See, it comes in this big roll there. So I've just started. That's my start point. Right, is my terminal block, which I got donated from a very nice friend because um, I couldn't find any in town because our electronic stores don't exist. Um, so it's just a little terminal block that has uh, connections that you can solder on one end and, uh, and then screw in a regular wire onto the other one just to make your, your regular connections. Note to self, always cover cells at night. Otherwise, cats come and mess up all your cells and bend the bus wires. I could just cut out that part and you'd never know. You stay away. Yeah, you do now is uh, crimp. How to crimp um, these MC4 connectors. Now these connectors, uh, this isn't required. Um, if you're just plugging it into a battery or something. Uh, but because my inverter connects straight up to the solar panel, um, it uses these types of connectors. These are called MC4 connectors. Okay. And then you just stick your wire in. 
pop it in there, you take your wire, you pop that in there, and you crimp, okay? Um, so once you have it crimped on the end of your wire, then you can just insert the pin. So these are leads I've made, right? So there's my positive right there, right? And that's going to a male connector. And there's my negative, that's going to a female connector. This diode is going to go into the positive side of the panel, which means you want to connect it up to the side that connects to the back of the solar cells, okay? So what I'm doing right now is uh, I've gotten this Silgard, which is also available at everbrightsolar.net where you buy. Uh, so I'm stirring this now and I'm going to let it sit, going to let it sit in the container here for a while to let the air bubbles come out. That's the um, silicone stuff that I just poured on. Uh, so I just poured it right over the edges of all the cells as far as I could. So I'm just going to go along the entire perimeter of the cells just so that they're nice and secure on the glass. This stuff is also a heck of a lot cheaper. Phase microinverter. Uh, this one's rated at 190 watts. They have ones that go up to 210 watts. So you can string a panel of any size, shape, description. Uh, it doesn't have to be matching. Um, you can plug it into this thing and max it out, and it just plugs straight into your grid. What I've done is created the trench. For the wire, the wire has to be 18 inches down, uh, so I've done that, and uh, you have to have this disconnect switch, uh, microinverter that I'm using to uh, to connect to the solar panels, just goes directly into a regular 240 volt wire. So what I'm going to do next is uh, wire it in all happen. It's now April, so it's nice and green out here again. Um, there's the trench that I made. It's starting to grow in again. Um, there's the disconnect. What I managed to do was build, I built a frame for it. And there it is. So it's on a frame now. Uh, it's angled to uh, direct it to the sun. See where my MC4 connectors are coming out. And on the back there is the inverter. To the connection back to the house. So it just goes into the block there and off it goes back to the house. So there you go, it's all done. Uh, it's producing 39 volts. Uh, maximum is what it's gotten so far. It should get up a little bit higher than that, but probably 40 or so. Uh, it's getting around 3.3 amps. Uh, again, it should get a little higher than that in the summertime. Uh, should get up around 3.5. So that should get me to about 140 watts, uh, which is which is good. Um, the inverter itself is rated for 190 watts. I wasn't sure what I was going to get out of the panel. Uh, so I was con pretty conservative. If I, uh, when I make another one, because I'll be making another one, uh, I'm going to add five more rows. Um, so I'm going to add five more rows onto my solar panel there. Uh, so instead of seven, or sorry, rows of 11 uh, down, there will be uh, 16 rows of cells. And, uh, and that'll give me around 56 volts, which is the maximum that the inverter can handle. And that should get me up uh, closer to 100, 190, 200 watts.